So we never told anyone we'd started trying, right? Because I've always found that a little bit unsettling. You know when you're like having dinner and a couple that you're with just announces that they've started trying, which basically translates as, we are currently banging the shit out of each other. And that puts me off my pavlova. A mate of mine once told me that him and his missus had just started trying properly, which suggested that before that they'd been trying improperly, which to me sounds like bottoms had been involved, which was not information I was hungry for in the middle of Debenhams. It's amazing how you think trying for a baby will just be months of red hot dirty pumping with your partner. And of course, once you start using phrases like red hot dirty pumping, your partner will quite rightly refuse to come anywhere near you. Sex should be something you do because the moment takes you. You know, unless it's an anniversary or a birthday, in which case these things are normally you know, planned into the schedule, which makes it much more difficult if the kids have gone to bed and you're trying to attempt a danger bonk on the bouncy castle. Romantically, it's two lovers, or three if you're greedy, losing yourself in a passionate exchange that brings your minds and bodies closer together. The second you start trying for the baby, all spontaneity evaporates like steam from an outdoor piss. Sex when you're trying to conceive feels a bit different, feels a bit more grown up, you know, more deliberate even. I know accidental sex doesn't exist, you know, unless you're part of an unfortunate high speed pile up at the roller disco, but baby making sex is about as serious as you can get without your pants on. Now maybe you're more clued up than me, but I thought getting pregnant would be a piece of piss, you know, like booking a holiday. You decide where you're going, how you're gonna get there, and before you know it, you're by the pool sipping a daiquiri. As a typical man, I made this whole process all about me. This wasn't a collaborative process between our reproductive systems. It was basically a job interview for my semen. And with my classic male ego, I was convinced that I could seal the deal the first time out. To use a basketball analogy, the bucket was open, I just had to slam dunk the ball, ideally with no dribbling. Then I read that a man's sexual peak is when they are 18 years old. 18? By the time we were trying to conceive, I was 36, so I was nearly 20 years past my best. That meant my penis was more like some old gunslinger with low self-esteem and a drink problem who's coming back for one final shootout. As project manager, my wife was keen to discuss our progress or lack thereof from the start. Thanks for attending this three month sexual performance review, Mr. Avery. How do you think you're getting on in the role so far? I think I've brought a renewed energy to the role. You know, what a lack in performance I've made up for with enthusiasm. Is there anything you feel you could have done a little bit better? Uh, I suppose I finished a little bit early last Friday. Sorry about that. I will try and make up the time later this week, if that's okay. Five months in, still nothing. I'm starting to get a bit annoyed with me semen at this point. You know, I'm, I'm feeling a bit let down. Considering there's 40 million of the fuckers in each attempt, not one of them's had the decency to do what they're supposed to do. So now sex is moving from pastime to chore, and like a lot of the grandeur associated with it is disappearing. And like, you know, making love to your wife should not be looked at the same way as mopping the kitchen floor. But often after sex, I'd look at my wife and just think, well, that won't need doing for another three days now. As a man, I've always tried to prolong the sexual act for as long as possible. And I'll be honest, over the years, my results have been quite mixed, you know, ranging from, from short to, you know, instant. One night we were just chatting in the kitchen, just having a conversation. And before we know it, we're getting, getting it on in the kitchen. And it's about to be the most porno sex I've ever had. She said, stop. Please stop. I said, why? She said, it's the wrong day. I said, but you said Monday. She said, I said Thursday. Just save it till then. I said, I can't maintain an erection for three days. She said, no, just keep those little fellas ready for me, okay? My little fellas had already put the coats on and booked an Uber. So I just got in a cold shower. Just, oh, it's awful. You know, my nuts disappeared like slugs in a salt mine. Just thinking, hang on, a couple of minutes ago, I was about to like uh, have the most effective three minutes in the kitchen since I discovered you can make pot noodles with the hot tap instead of the kettle. And now I'm in a cold shower with me nuts disappearing up to me armpits. The fuck's happened? And now we're seven months in, eight months in. Everyone else seems to be getting pregnant. Everyone, family, friends, characters on EastEnders, next door's cat got up the duff twice. Then I'm on a night out, remember them? And I'm chatting to a friend of a friend and he's got six kids to three different women. And I parked me model judgment for a second and I thought, you know what? Clearly this guy's more fertile than a wet gremlin. So I'm gonna ask him what his secret is. And he just said to me, listen mate, Every time I've got a beard up the duff, I've just been absolutely shit-faced. And I doubted whether this technique was endorsed by the British Medical Journal, but I just thought, well, being sober's not work, so what am what I to do? You know, maybe a few million sperm off the tits on vodka Red Bull. At least it's a different plan of attack, innit? You know, unless they stop at the fallopian tube for a quick kebab. What happened that night was a fucking disaster. I could barely get me key in the door, which was a perfect metaphor for my sexual technique that night. Can I just apologise right now to me mum, who may be watching this video? I swung the door open, my wife's asleep, I stood there, uh, I can't remember what happened next, but she told me the next day I just took all my clothes off and she woke up thinking I was going to piss in the wardrobe again because I got form. <laughs> Apparently I turned around and went, come on baby, let's do some sex. There's normally no chance my wife would have accepted that, but you know, we were trying for a baby, so she, we went on to have like two of the most incompetent minutes of highly unenjoyable 
like terrible sex. We had to change position because apparently my breath smelled of garlic and Red Bull. But revenge was hers because the next day I woke up with a stinking hangover and she insisted on another quickie, which I think made me puke up afterwards. Now, thankfully, we didn't get pregnant that night, but our luck was about to change. I've been up in Edinburgh doing a stand-up show at the festival. My wife had been up at the start of the run. You know, we spent a bit of time together and then she'd gone home and I hadn't seen her for two weeks. And I'm driving home and I'm suddenly aware that she's not mentioned that she's had a period for quite a while. I get stuck in traffic, so stop at the next services and I text my wife to tell her that I'm running a little bit late. She rings me instantly demanding to know when I'm going to be home. There's something in her voice like a twinkle. So this little seed she's planted in my head is starting to grow and by the time we get onto the final stretch of the motorway, I'm convinced this is it. This is it, I'm gonna be a dad. I'm sure that's what she's gonna tell me. You know, I'm thinking about baby names and how I'm gonna announce it on Facebook. Get through the front door, she gives me a hug. Like, a hug I've never had before. It's like a, it's, it's sweeter. You know, like if someone puts an extra sugar in your tea. I'm thinking, this is it, she's gonna tell me. She sits me down on the sofa, she says, we need to talk. I've got something for you. I'm thinking, this is it, here we go. The best moment of my entire life is about to happen right now. Bring it on. She reaches down the side of the sofa with all the stagecraft of a Vegas magician and pulls out a gift bag. I reach inside the gift bag. Inside is a fucking watch box. She's bought me a watch. I've been driving 90 miles an hour down the motorway for a fucking watch. Is that it? So I plaster on a fake smile. You know, like you do when you're nangies at a uni slip at a Christmas. So I open the box and inside is a pregnancy test. And it's positive. We're going to become parents. What a beautiful swerve. And I could have said anything to my wife at that point. Anything. You know, I could have declared my undying devotion to her. You know, told her about the excitement that was just bursting through my veins about this new family that we were starting together. But out of all the options available to me, the one my brain decided to go with was... Have you pissed on this? 